Hey everybody, Sam Culver from Forward Observer. Sorry for this weird camera angle. It's only, I left my uh, uh, selfie stick thing at home and uh, I'm up here north of Dallas to go to a low light shooting course this afternoon and this evening. And I'm here early. So I wanted to tell you about a, a book I'm reading. It's called The Sovereign Individual and it's all about the transition, it's really a history book. The main premise of the book is that we are moving from, we have moved from the industrial period to the information period. And as we continue to develop these information in societies, they will undermine the nation state. And the book goes through the beginning, it goes through in, in Europe goes back through the dark ages and explains how around the year 1000 there was basically a societal revolution that led to led from the dark ages to a period of feudalism and then around 1500 you have the end of feudalism and the beginning of the industrial period you have industrialism and then they argue in 2000 the, we've moved from the industrial age to the information age. And the first of all, this book's phenomenal. I highly recommend you read it, especially if you like history. The most important, you know, they, they say that um, once we get into this informational period, um, that the nation state will disappear because we will no longer need to rely on government. We'll, um, basically, they say taxation and a number of other things will eventually lead to the collapse of a national government. And they say that at, at some point during this age, and we it may be in my lifetime, it's likely to be in my kid's lifetime, definitely going to be in my grandkid's lifetime, that... We will look, they will look back on being a citizen of a country in the same way that we look back at the age of feudalism and the concept of, of feudal lords and vassals is so foreign. Basically, once the feudalistic age ended, lords and vassals just completely disappeared. And at some point in the information age, this whole concept of a nation state and being a citizen and paying taxes to a government to to kind of remain a citizen of of this country is going to disappear, which is very interesting. They basically say we're going back to kind of a more a freer, but also more tribalistic society because, uh, you know, basically the here's one crazy thing. This book was written back in the 1990s and they talk about cyber money. Now, I know in the late 90s, people were kind of talking about, hey, there's an internet, there's going to be, everything's going to be revolutionized, and they talked about cyber money or, you know, what is this going to do to to money as we know it, to currency? But this, of course, is cryptocurrency today, and they basically say that is cryptocurrencies, even though they don't call it by that name, are going to undermine governments because eventually – so much of our work is going to be online. So many of us are going to be making money through through the internet that we will adopt internet money or cyber money or cryptocurrency, which governments are not going to be able to tax. And you think about Bitcoin or some of these other cryptocurrencies, it really can't be confiscated, right? It, it's not like a bank account where the government says, okay, we're going to freeze your funds. Well, Bitcoin doesn't work like that. And so... I thought that was very interesting. And this, they're talking about this back in the 1990s. And so um, this whole, I started reading this book because I read this blog post the other day, but I think the website's called Wall Street Playboys. And it's a financial you know, investing website, but they talk about four things that we can do as we move, as we get deeper into this informational age and things are changing, they, they, mentioned the book. So I went and bought the book and um, I'm about like halfway through it right now. Um, but they talk about, you know, how um, basically they had, the advice they give is for people to build multiple income streams online. 
And, you know, then they talk about social mobility, how, you know, with COVID and, you know, these other things, uh, people and, you know, more and more work being done on the Internet and people working from home, they're no longer tied to the city. So now they're free. They can live, go live wherever they want. And with that means moving to avoid taxation. And we're already seeing a lot of that, especially here in Texas, uh, where, uh, you know, companies and, and businesses and people are moving from California, specifically from the Bay Area to Austin and to Dallas and Houston and other other cities in Texas to escape taxation. And the blog post was really about how you can get out from under the thumb of, of government and, you know, basically where you want to be, uh, because government is going to increasingly have to raise taxes and they're primarily going to be raising taxes on the uber wealthy. And so um, it's an interesting blog post. I'll try to I'll find the link and I'll put it in the description below. You should read it. It's very, very good. I'm going to give it to my dad to read. And actually, I bought this book. I bought two copies of this book. One is for my dad for Christmas. Um not because it's going to affect his life, but I want him to understand a vision of the future, what I th which I think is quite likely a vision of the future of uh, how his grandkids, where his grandkids and great grandkids are going to live, the society, the society in which they are going to inherit and navigate. Because, you know, he's he's trying to make kind of these strategic moves to where he where he thinks the country is headed. And I don't know, he may be influenced somewhat by me and the things that I tell him about what I believe. Uh, but I firmly believe, hey, this is the in very interesting thing. I, you know, I do believe that, that the United States as an empire is in decline. Within my lifetime, I do, ex I do expect to see the end of the American empire. The OMB hack back in 2011 or so, or maybe 12. And then this solar winds hack, which we are told... Hey, it's a very narrow attack. They got into commerce and treasury and they were reading emails. And and now it turns out they've apparently the Russians, who knows? Trump says it may have been the Chinese. Maybe they don't know. But, um, you know, they say now they got into all five branches of the U.S. military. They got into the uh, nuclear security agency and uh, they've just got they for months, they've had access to all this stuff. And I just look at that and I say, I've talked about this before, I think. The Roman Empire, right? They had 15,000 miles of basically paved roads, of stone roads, where slaves or whoever went in there, engineers went in and designed these roads, some of which still exist today. They still drive down some of these roads today and they're 2,000 years old, 2,000 plus years old. And... That is what allowed the Roman Empire to that that enabled commerce for the Roman Empire, which allowed them to build great wealth. The problem for the Romans is that their empire expanded to it was too large and they had an agrarian society and taxes are how the Romans paid for all this stuff. And basically their the empire, the lands which they had to defend became too sprawling too large geographically, and they basically outgrew their agrarian tax base. And that is one thing that led to the collapse of the Roman Empire is that they got too big and they they just couldn't do it anymore. And it's interesting because this book talks a little bit about that, basically how um, the taxes were so onerous during the collapse of the Roman Empire that people walked away from the land because they could not afford the taxes to live on it. And and I, now I look at that and I look at the United States and the Internet and, you know, globalization and all, you know, this is what has at, at some level, it's made America very, very wealthy. It's also hollowed us, hollowed us out. And, you know, one concern is when the United States dollar does lose its world reserve currency, which I think will probably happen in the next 20 years, if history is an indicator because currencies only enjoy world reserve status for somewhere between 80 to 110 years, but let's just call it 100 years. And we go from, you know, the night, let's just say 1950 at the very latest. Okay, so whatever, that's 30 years from now. Uh, 
you know, 100 years from 1950, basically pro, post Bretton Woods, uh, let's just say 1950 till 2050, that's 30 years. But this is also a process that, you know, it's not like we're just going to wake up and then on Tuesday morning, we're going to say, oh, U.S. dollar is no longer the world reserve currency. What I think will probably happen is around 2040 to 2050 will probably be the very end when the rest of the world starts to realize, actually, hey, yeah, the U.S. dollar is just we're not doing business in dollars anymore. Like I'm buying something from I live in Argentina and I'm buying something from Japan and I'm no longer taking my dollars. I'm no longer taking my Argentine pesos, buying dollars and then using dollars to buy things on a global market. And that's going to sap international demand for the U.S. dollar, which is going to incredibly devalue the U.S. dollar. And that's going to have untold economic, financial, and, and monetary impacts here in the United States. Not only that, but on the topic of cryptocurrencies, now we're actually looking at the potential for a either a digitized currency or a cryptocurrency becoming the next uh, world reserve currency. As the United States racks up more and more debt, international investors are going to be uh, more and more cautious about how much how many dollars they own, because the more debt we have, the lower economic growth we'll have, which will lead to to less strength in the dollar. Not only that, but now we get into massive, uh, you know, financial shocks here in the United States as a result of of more and more people moving away from the dollar, and the the potential for this thing just to spiral out of control over the next twenty years, I would say, is very very high. At any rate, so the question now is the question that my dad is trying to answer the question that i'm trying to answer is what moves can we make now if these guys are right that wrote this book the sovereign individual which is a fantastic book i highly recommend it if you read one book next year make it the sovereign individual or listen to it on audiobook or whatever if these guys are right that the information age is going to lead to the collapse of the nation state as we know it what kind of society are we going to inherit? Is it going to be more utopian or is it going to be more dy dystopian? And I think the answer to that is, is partially based on the strength of the networks that we build today, partially ba based on the strength of the tribe that we have today. If we're able to build largely self-sufficient communities that are based on uh, trust networks, that are based on... Uh, you know, cooperation and respect, you know, basically your tribe, you know, you, you go back to th thousands of years ago, and if you violated your tribe's rules, you might be excommunicated. And so that was kind of the incentive for everyone to, to use the same kind of cultural standard and, you know, kind of generally obey the same rules. And maybe we're going, maybe we're going to go back to that type of society, society, at least for a little while, in the future, which is why, which is why you see a lot of guys who are way smarter than I am, talking about go build your tribe and you know build up your local. You know, I say build up your local networks because I'm an intel guy and that's what I'm interested in local information so that we can better adapt and respond to the changes in our operating environment. And that may be opportunities, but it's primarily threats. I want to know about threats in the area so that we can deal with them before they deal with us in the future. If we do get to this period where the nation state does collapse, the question is, what is going to replace it? Are we going to trade one tyranny for another? And just to reiterate, I think the answer to that question largely depends on the strength of your tribal networks or this, the strength of your tribe, the strength of your networks that you're building now. And that's why building networks is so incredibly important. That's why I advocate, go start a neighborhood watch, go get to know your neighbors, go find like-minded individuals. And I know that's a super important topic for a lot of people in the preparedness community, because I get questions all the time, Sam, how can I meet preppers in my area? And you know what, man, you may just have to start a county preparedness network and I don't know, put it on Facebook, even though it's not my it's one option. You know, another thing that occurred to me, I listened to the this country radio station where I live, and they always call for like nonprofits. If you have an event coming up or you want to help get your nonprofit organization out there, 
then you know you can send them, a, then them an email or whatever, and they'll read this stuff on the radio. Well, that's what we're going to start doing with our with our local preparedness network to hopefully reach more people. So I would just look for opportunities like that, especially if you can get onto a local radio station and say, hey, you know, preparedness is important. We're seeing this with, you know, X, Y, or Z, whatever's been going on in the news recently. And we want to get more involvement in the community in preparedness. Here's a website. Here's an email address. You know, here's a meeting on Thursday night. Everybody come out. So there's a lot of things that you can be doing, and I highly recommend everyone be proactive about this. I'm being as proactive as I can um, about this as well. It's basically a strategic imperative at this point that everyone does this because over the next probably 20 to 40 plus years, the United States is going to go through some very drastic changes. I firmly believe that. And if we're not preparing for that, you know, it's one thing people say, oh, I'm going to buy this food and get this water and I got my gear and I got my bug out bag. Frankly, that just doesn't do jack shit for you. I mean, it might keep you alive for a couple of days, but it doesn't build community. And what I'm learning from this book and from a lot of other books that I read is that the strength of your community is is largely going to dictate the level of of sufficiency and resilience that you have in the future so at any rate that's my spiel thanks for watching be subs uh, be sure to subscribe to this youtube channel because i'm going to be doing a lot more and then next month when i do launch my training company i'm going to be doing a lot more kind of training videos talking about intelligence and security we have a class coming up in Bryan, texas on the 9th and 10th of january it's close target reconnaissance couple of uh, special operation army uh, soft guys are putting that on and that's going to be huge the whole thing the whole point of this new training company that we're launching is to get people prepared look i'm going to shooting class today that shooting stuff super important but we want to focus on the soft skills um, that are going to increase your survivability stuff like intelligence and security you know intelligence gathering intelligence analysis uh security concepts opsec uh comsec you know all, all the, we had we used to have this poster that said practice safe sex and you know sec is obviously just the truncated version of security so operation security communication security personal security physical security so on and that's really what we're going to be focusing on in 2021 and for as many years as we can possibly teach this stuff. we got to get all this knowledge out there. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can sign up for more information. Like we're going to be publishing our training schedule for next year, at least for the first quarter of this coming 2021. So uh, jump on that list. And if we come near you, I highly recommend you go to these courses. They're going to be well worth your time. And... If you, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel, get more of it. I'll be, I'm going to be doing more of these. Uh, until next time, be well and stay out front.